What's up, guys? What's up? What's up? Welcome to the Power of the Voice. So happy you guys are with us today. So happy to see you again. Good to see you, fam. It's always good to hear from you. Listen, we're going to go in Genesis, the first chapter. We're going to start from the beginning. So grab your Bibles. You'll watch the Power of the Voice. So what's up guys, welcome to The Power of the Voice. So happy you guys are back with us again this week for another great week of The Power of the Voice. Listen, go over to the website, thepowerofthevoice.com. It's absolutely free, no cost to you whatsoever. Go and check out some of the blog stuff. Check out the website, it's free. Also 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Got a prayer line, we're gonna talk to God. Your communication with God is very important. Gives you access to the Father. Just by grace, anyways. We don't. It's nothing that we can do to be able to earn how great God is. It's all about Him being God. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Who is God? What is God? What is that? What is all of this about? Why is it so important for us to have a God? Why is it so important for us to know God? What part does God play in our life? What part do we play in His master plan? Uh, I was listening today, I was talking to uh, a few friends of mine, they was, <laughs> was actually doing some work and just talking about God, talking about church, just talking about spiritual things. And I listened, if you know me, people who know me, I listen. I try to <laughs> listen before I speak, you know. You have to be wise enough to sometimes just listen. <clears throat> we don't always have all the answers. We don't know everything. Uh, sometimes just being able to hear and to listen. Sometimes God will speak at that time. Sometimes he'll speak later. I, but we were just talking. And they were just talking about their experiences with church. The people in the church. And how that related to them. And how that relates to God because of their experiences through the church and with people how that affected their relationship with God and it's all the whys well, why would God do this and why would God allow that and why God this and why God that they was speaking from a place where they was damaged they was hurt there was even some abuse, some neglect, even some fear. And the amazing thing about it is, at that moment, as they were speaking, as they were talking, I did hear God tell me a few things. Uh, but it wasn't until I realized later, maybe a day or so after, how great God is. See, He has a plan. God has a strategic plan. Also, the enemy has a plan. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning was God. He created the heavens and the earth. He put Adam on the planet and had a plan. Right? His plan. To add Adam, subdue the earth, multiply it, let it bring forth fruit. So we see God, being God, showing his plan. Right? God plan came forth, they was in the garden, they was taking care of the garden. However, in the place where God had put them, where God had planted them. God plants you in certain places. He brings you in certain realms. So you write where God has you. The people. The church. The plan. 
right? But if we also look at the book of Genesis, the devil had a plan. Huh. And what he did was he didn't create his own world. The devil didn't create his own planet and said, I'm going to entice them to come over to my planet because my planet is better than God's planet. He didn't try to persuade them to leave Earth. What he did was he infiltrated right into the place where God had planted them. Right into the place where God had put his promise for them. Right into the place where God has put his will. That's where the enemy showed up at. And I don't know, I don't know. Maybe the church that you didn't like, the preacher, played you. The congregation made you feel embarrassed or ashamed. But that's sometimes where the enemy will place his plan. Right in that place. Because his job is to push them away from God. As long as they're not doing the plan of God, it didn't matter what form he did. Satan used the creation that God created. God created the serpent. And the devil used that person, that, that, that animal, to persuade, to change, to move a Adam and Eve out of the plan. I, what am I saying? What, what, where am I going? There, there are people that the enemy places around your life. The serpent had no uh, master grand plan. The serpent had no master grand plan on how to perceive, to, to, to take them out of the place where God wanted them to be. It was the plan of the enemy. And what he did was he didn't even use something outside of what their understanding was. He used the words of God. He said, if you eat this fruit, surely you won't die. Well, that was God's conversation. That was God's word. He even used God's word to try to pull them out of the will of God. The enemy has so many ways that he wants to try to pull you out of the will of God. Don't, don't box yourself in to your God by the experiences that you have had with the wrong people. And the enemy did it throughout the whole course of time, throughout the Bible, even up until today. We see the adversary always doing the same thing he did in the garden. It's to persuade you that you can be your own God. The amazing thing about God is that we are all a part of his creation and in all of us he put a part of him. We are All of us he puts a piece of him. We become his arms, his legs, his hands, his, his body on the earth. So if we are his body on the earth, and he moves through his body, there are certain people that are going to come into your life and around you that he's going to use because we are his body. And the amazing thing about God, it doesn't even matter if you are the best person in the world, if you're the greatest person on the planet. God decides to use whoever he wants to use, for he is kind to the unthankful and to the evil. He loves us all. His grace and his love is so perfect. It's perfect. There's no flaws. There's no different ideologies. His grace is grace. His love is love. His peace is peace. His happiness is happiness. His joy is joy. And He wants to fill you with it. Imagine the most powerful thing you could ever imagine. Giving you peace. Giving you joy. Giving you love. And he longs to do that. He sent the son for that. He sent his only son just so that you can have that experience. See, the fall of Adam, the fall of Eve, pushed us out of a, a comfort zone. To this son, he said this, he gave his life. The amazing part about it is that uh, we find God giving his son, his son giving his life, so that we can have life. Um, 
as we go through experiences in life, as we are in uh, places where the enemy has infiltrated into our different systems of our world, uh, friends, family, relationships, money, finances, uh, sometimes that leaves residue. It leaves pieces of broken fragment pieces. It leaves hurt, disappointment, rejection, pain, bitterness, fear. Uh, it leaves a lot of turmoil. Sometimes uh, there is deep-rooted things that are sent to by the enemy to just keep you bound in a certain particular place. He know he cannot stop God from being God in your life. Uh, he know he can't stop God from being the Father. He, he's God regardless, good or bad, right or wrong. But so what the enemy does is that he puts uh, people or things in your life, and he wants you to stay stuck in a place. Some of you are stuck in a place. You're stuck in a place mentally, you're stuck in a place financially, you're stuck in a place. Uh, and that place has been causing you more damage and more hurt. Uh, that privilege has been causing you more damage and hurt. That blessings it has stopped some of the blessing. It has healed, hindered some of your growth. Uh, it has stopped you from being able to experience what God is or who he is or what he desires to show you through uh, his word or through his presence or through his people. Uh, so what God will do is he'll allow certain people to come along in your life to help kind of excavate those things out of your life. But you have to be willing, uh, you have to be free enough, you have to be open enough to allow either God, God's people, his word, his presence to change that. Uh, if you're deep rooted and not uh, going to church, if you're deep rooted and not uh, reading your word or, or just focusing on, on the Father, uh, it's going to be hard for you to come out of that place. Not impossible for all things are possible uh, with God, but I want to help you today. I want you to know that you have freedom. Uh, the freedom is yours, you, but you have to let go of some bitterness. You have to let go of the hurt, the pain, the rejection, the fear, uh, and trust God again. It, the enemy is just after your trust. Uh, he's not after your car. He's not after your relationship. He's not. At, he's really not after any of those things. The enemy can't do anything with your car. I mean, what, is, what, what is he going to drive your car to where? To, to hell? Like he can't do anything with your car. But he wants your peace. He wants your confidence in God, uh, because without God, it's impossible to please him. And what he does is pound, compound all of this stuff over your life, all this stuff around you, uh, and then those seeds are growing inside of your heart. Uh, but today is, is your day of freedom. He knows, the Father knows you will be here today. The Father knows you will be watching this. The Father knows that you will be listening to this program so that you can get freedom today. Listen, oppression does not have to stay in your life. Depression, anxiety, fear, wherever it does ha not have to stay. Uh, it can be removed out of your life. It does not have to be a part of your daily life. For the sun sets free is free indeed. You have to be able to know that for sure. And you may not feel it. You may not want to feel a feeling. You may not feel something. Uh, some of you, you can. You can feel the presence entering into your room. Uh, some of you can feel the presence entering into you right now. Uh, you can feel the change. You can feel your atmosphere begin to shift. Uh, but just because the power of the word is just that strong. Uh, but today is your day of deliverance. It's your day of freedom today. Uh, your, 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 your worst days are over. Your better days are, are coming ahead. God has already designed for the foundation of the world to give you the good things. Uh, he has desired for you to live in hope and to peace and to prosperity and to just be free and to love. Those things are yours. The enemy has just used all of these things and all these people to block it. But today, just free yourself. Ask the Father to free me. Let the Father know you want to be free. And that when there is hurt, where people have hurt you, let it go. Forgive. Say, I won't hold on to it anymore. Where you've been disappointed, let it go. I know sometimes we are um, have been let down so many times, we've been hurt so many times that even it crushes our expectation. We don't uh, even have expectation because we don't want to get too excited for the fear of being let down. But today, ask the Lord to remove the fear. Father, I pray today that you remove that fear. Father, I pray that today that you move that um, that blockage to try to stop that move of expectation. Uh, God, that they'll be expecting you, God, to do something great uh, that they know that you can do. Oh, God, that you are our Father. We can only trust in you. Some trust in horses. Some trust in chariots. But we will trust in the name of the Lord. Listen, your choice is important to God. He even gives everybody a measure of faith. He even gives you faith. And we use faith every day. We use it on our jobs. We use it with our, just getting food out of just basic stuff that we do every day. We expect what we to do on the normal to work. We we have faith that tomorrow is good, the sun is going to shine. Sometimes we, uh, the enemy just can put such a dark cloud over our life. 
uh, and sometimes that dark cloud is fed by our own fear. Uh, but today I remove the dark cloud from over your life. I rebuke fear off of your life. I rebuke fear and anxiety and worry and stress today. It's not your portion. It doesn't belong to you. All those things are old. Yes, it has happened. Yes, it was painful. Yes, it was disappointing. But tomorrow, today, is a day that the Father has made strictly to give you the goodness, to give you the kingdom. For it's the Father's good pleasure to give it to you. Press down together, shake it over. And to restore you, to give you the strength, to, to anoint your head with oil, to lead you in the valley of the shadows. For he'll be with you. Be not dismayed. Don't be fear. Don't worry anymore. You don't have to worry. You choose to worry. Let today make a choice not to fear. Your greatest days are ahead of you. Your greatest days is today. God had already designed that for you. He has a perfect plan for you. Sometimes we may go around the mountain of life. We may go through the hills and valley of circumstances. We may sometimes struggle with our own identity and our own personality. But today, freedom is to you. Freedom. I, there's freedom today. There's freedom in your home. Freedom of your job, freedom everywhere. Freedom is yours today. Take it. Take it while it's here. If I was to call you on the phone right now and say, listen, I have a thousand dollars for you. You know, do everything you can to come get that thousand dollars. And I say, I give it to you. It's a gift. It's free. It's, it doesn't cost you anything. Just just get it. Just come and receive it. I'm pretty sure you'll come and get it. You you'll take it. You may have some skepticism because, again, life has sometimes beat and bruised us so much that we become so uh, we become a hostage to our encounters. But I free you today. You will come get that money. You will come get that that cash. Well, that's what it is. The freedom of God is just like that. Receive it. Just take it. Didn't matter if you didn't have any money before. Didn't matter if you was broke before. It didn't matter if you didn't have it in your pocket before. It's a free gift to you. So don't worry about the broke. Don't worry about the hurt. And trust in God. Listen, today is your day. If you don't know this Jesus, this is your first time to hear about this Christ. Who is this Messiah? He's the Son of God. His name is Jesus Christ. And we love him. And he loves you. But he wants to reveal himself to you in a deeper way. But he wants you to invite him into your life. And everything that you face, everything that you've been around, it's all been distractions to try to stop him from engaging into your heart. But I free you today. And if you want to be free, say this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, come into my heart. Show me who you are. Teach me your word. And I glorify you all the days of my life. It's just that simple. It's out of the mouth confession is made. Out of the mouth salvation. Out of your mouth. You receive the free gift of our Father. And if you did say that prayer, welcome to the kingdom. So happy to have you here. Your life is about to change. Grab your Bible. Read that word. Get into it. Dissect it. Read it consistently. It don't even matter if you can't even grasp all of the these and thus the thou's. Get you a Bible that you can read and just read it. Start with the New Testament and learn who this Jesus is. If you know our Jesus and you love our God, my brother, my sister, I want to pray for you today that your strength will be grown, that your, that your heart will be abound in the things of God. Dear Father, we thank you for our brother. We thank you for our sister today. We thank you that you have blessed them for this time, for this season, for this ever. Bring victory to their house. Be glory to your presence around them. Be that shield, that guidance, that hope that they need today. Be with them as he was with Jehoshaphat when he fought the battle. Take control today. For if you don't do it, God, it won't be done. If you don't show us, we will not see it. If you don't speak, we can't hear. We are dependent on you to give us and to show us and to reveal to us what you desire to do. So happy you guys are with us today. Listen, we're here every week. Every every week. Thepowerofthevoice.com, always. Check us out. Also, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we're talking to God. Call that number on the screen. We can call it to connect with God. 
and we love you so much. He loves you even more. Till next week, you're welcome, power. You're watching Power of the Voice.